again from the Showtech Show here on the Lone Star Webcast Network. I'm your host Rick Har here on uh, the set by myself once again this week. Scott is again out working his real job, getting paid Showcast. money. Yeah, but I'm not alone. That uh, voice you hear is, is my good buddy TD board Jordan. controller right here. Hello board guys. Up. Hello. Well, happy Easter to you, Jordan. Thanks happy for coming Easter. out and uh, making an effort to do the show yep. with us. Yeah. Also wanted to say happy birthday. Happy coming birthday, up Harvin. To our uh, good Good buddy, friend of the show, Harvin. He's uh, out uh, having having it up tonight. So I just wanted to say shout out to Jesus and Harvin uh, tonight. <laughs> Not the same person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no relation. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking. Uh, this is going to start off our series on production life hacks. A uh, little um, un unknown uh, random tips that uh, come from raw innovation and intuitive fixedness. I think I said that. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, <laughs> He's looking at me like, I don't know where you're going with that. But yeah, so production hacks. We're going to start off with some video hacks tonight. So uh, if you're in the video world or might have cause to need some video hacks in your life, stay tuned. That's what happens when you don't have a lighting person here on set. They yes, just the basically, script falls apart. It goes out of video, video, Ooh. video, video. Oh, yes. Yeah, if you're not into video and you're maybe more theatrically inclined, to join us in the near future where we're going to make Scott come back and kind of balance this out. Because... Uh, <laughs> I think Jordan and I are both pretty heavily video skewed. Yeah, Sorry. I can talk a little bit about lighting because I know how to turn on the lens on a source for a par, but other yeah. than that, he I don't know. taught you that ad nauseum. <laughs> no more on my face. Yeah. Um, also, we're going to do our weekly roundup of jobs in our segment we like to call the job board. And we'll also catch you up on the latest in show tech news in our rapid fire segment that we like to call next. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess Jordan and I were talking before the show that mm -hmm. uh, last week, if you were watching us, we had a little commercial break for uh, people who obviously didn't need it. But Super Troopers 2, oh, yes. one of our favorite show tech road movies to watch, uh, is kickstarting, or I'm sorry, crowdfunding on Indiegogo, a, uh, a sequel, a Super Troopers 2. Uh, they uh, they working with Fox to get distribution, but they wanted to go independent to make the movie that they wanted to make and not one that would fit into a studio budget or idea of what makes a good movie. So they're going the crowdfunding route and they've made their funding. Yes, they did. They actually, their minimum goal was $2 million. They're currently at $3.3 .3 million, um, but they're still wanting to go more. You know, they just want to, it's like, hey, two million is a bare minimal. <laughs> you know, we can do this with this, but you know, if we're like totally going to go all the way, like if we can go higher, we can actually have, you know, epical explosions and like Godzilla and stuff like that, you know, just I'm, some crazy I'm stuff. About you know? this. Yeah. What if this, uh, what if this turns into like a, great movie just because uh they ended up going to the the fans and the people who actually wanted to see it made versus uh you know the standard producer who's just going to be yeah. like all right what's this going to make a little niche market a little drinking movie all right we'll throw this much money at it and kind of a stock director and resources no this could actually be a labor of love that turns into something epic so uh, i didn't forward. think the first one was even good you know with its bare minimum budget they had was like 1.5 1. 1. yeah, well, yeah 1.3 or earlier. something like that it was just you know, we were looking at it earlier it was just it was awesome just you know funny it's one of these like you know crazy epic movies that Everybody must have, and that you must always carry with you when you're on a road show and stuff like that. Yes. You're doing productions. That you know, always is mandatory. Have it. Well, that's the thing about comedies. They, uh, they do not require lots of money. That's why comedies are a great way for production companies to get started in low-budget outfits. That's why comedy is big on YouTube. Very easy to produce. Uh, laughs are cheap. Um, that doesn't mean that you couldn't do some awesome stuff with a big budget comedy movie. So that, that could be exciting for sure. So uh, I guess we'll keep you updated uh, on Super Definitely. Troopers 2. Just as a bonus to hear you watching the Showtech show. Anything else you want to say about that one? No, not much. I just say, you know, just if you're interested to donate, you know, just just Google Super Trooper 2. And you'll go to the Indigo link and boom, you're yeah. right there. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Well, let's go ahead and hit next on that one. Mother we'll of God. Down. Yeah. Yeah, so we spent uh, like 
an hour on the news last week. We had Nate Davis on, and he was very patient to sit with us and uh, let us get through our standard. Uh, <laughs> this is the quickest next. The show. It was a big news week last week, so I guess the law of averages is working. We don't have a ton of news in the lineup this week, which is good news for you, the viewer. It means you don't have to sit through all that stuff if it's boring to you. You just get to get right to the meat of it and, and just more more camera time with me here, which is really the draw, I'm sure, right? <laughs> Uh, the next thing I had next. written, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is actually something Jordan that you had put down on the the rundown uh, last week. Yeah, it was last it. week. Yeah, but this uh, the cho- the chopper versus drone. Tell us exactly. about exactly. So I read this weird this article and um, I couldn't actually find it the link again, but it's talking Tell about us. how a news station was reco- um, you know going over this event, this live breaking news and stuff like that. And they had a bunch of drones that were flying around the helicopter at, you know, its level. It's actually higher than the level that's approved by the FCC. You know, the helicopter is going to be about the FAA. (laughs) FCC, same thing. All government stuff, you know. The feds. (laughs) Just say the feds. Just the the feds. The FTC. So these drones were... uh, uh, supposedly they were uh, freelance news people or uh, they're other, just, or they're just, just regular people that can go get the cheapest drone out there you know the fandom or whatever that's 800 bucks and they're just flying it around and just like seeing what it is well I have been starting to see news events now when you've got your uh, man on the street reporters out there and camera crews a lot of them are fielding drones whether or not in official capacity or not they actually do have drone cameras out this is popular for yeah. uh, accident scenes where the cops are like no you gotta stay back 500 yards or whatever like fine well, my helicopter can go yeah. that close which to me if i'm a cop i'm just gonna be like bam I told you. <laughs> target practice Dude, super troopers get in on this <laughs> yes right? they will <laughs> but uh yeah i mean so anyway the, the so we've got a legitimate news organization flying a licensed helicopter over a scene doing their their business and there's a bunch of drones buzzing it so and what, of course what goes you, down? you know the, the helicopter don't say the helicopter the, the, the well the helicopter the news chopper the actual legit news chopper that you know fits humans that's you know a person is in the cockpit flying it right you know they are at their their altitude where they're flying 1500 feet or 1300 feet something like that to get the shot and there's drones are just flying right underneath them about 1100 feet you know or 1000 feet which the drones cannot fly over 800 feet by the feds by the rules by the rules set by the feds so and their biggest worry with the helicopter is you you do have an intake from the propellers and stuff like that that could suck it up into their you know that would be no bueno yeah props if you're and crash the helicopter yeah that that could be a big problem especially uh, that hopefully we don't see an event like that in the near future because that would certainly change the conversation about drone use in the United States uh, if it it causes somehow some actual loss of life these things tend to be uh, pretty innocuous pretty non-threatening little remote yeah. control toys but uh, yeah. depends on what you do with them and some are pretty high powered nowadays especially professional quasi-professional ones I've been watching some shows on how to build and operate these suckers and these are no I mean these are not your uh, grandfather's wind up balsa wood toy these are some serious pieces of hardware that you could uh, fly into a helicopter so yeah. don't, don't do that and I watched uh, you know on an off topic thing I watched a video just yesterday about a a, a drone that can carry a 30 pound camera it's carrying the phantom flex camera which is you know a roughly it's about 30 pounds you know massive bees as a massive helicopter yeah. <laughs> it's just like you know to carry it for 30 pounds i mean 30 pounds of weight for this phantom flex which is phantom cameras it's just but expensive and everything like that you know it's but it you know we're pushing the market on it but the thing with this news helicopter let me go back to the point yeah on this thing. okay so Here's the thing. If you're going to be flying a drone around a news helicopter, think about this. They're a news helicopter. They have a camera that can zoom in and stuff like that. They're going to follow that drone, and eventually they follow that drone to see the person's house where it landed and called the police huh. and said, hey, this person was flying his drone close to a helicopter at this altitude. And we've got high-definition footage of the We had the event. footage yeah. of the thing, blah, 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 busted. The guy is going to get, you know... Bye-bye. He's going to get his non-existent FAA license taken away. <laughs> I, I still don't know what they do about breaking the FAA laws without an enforcement arm, but uh, this guy might be one of the first tests of that. So, uh, 
Uh, interesting, yeah. More on drones as it develops. Jordan yes. is our uh, resident drone expert. And especially, out. you know, I'll probably, like, next week, not the, not this week, but the next week I'll be at NAB, and, of course, I'm going to their drone pavilion. I'll be looking up every little thing about drones. So probably in two weeks I'll have a good discussion about drones. Yeah, okay, you good. Know? We can uh, we can drive Some Scott nuts. Because yeah, that has definitely. absolutely It'll nothing like, to do with theater. Real quick, so I, I don't think I've ever seen a theater application of drones yet. You know, know, not yet, but I think it's going to probably be distracting from the period piece. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, poor Yorick. Um, next. <laughs> next. <laughs> next. Always, always good end on a Shakespeare reference. That's <laughs> comedy gold. Uh, okay, I don't know if you have this link pulled up, um, this audio dissonance thing. Did you see the negative Ghost Rider? All right, well, I'll walk into this slowly. I'm cracking open a beer right now. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> so pro. Uh, so this was something I thought uh, was kind of interesting. We kind of went into discussing the dress when that whole thing came out on oh social gosh. media a few weeks ago. Is it done with? Is it white and it gold? Is it blue and it's black? I don't know. You see one thing depending on who you are and what you're looking at. And there were all sorts of extenuating circumstances that made the same media communicate differently to different sectors of the audience. And that was, uh, so that was just kind of some interesting theoretical talking about uh, color and lighting. And I kind of drew Scott into that a little bit. Maybe unfairly, because he really hated that story, too. <laughs> Next is basically the segment what? about stories that uh, Scott hates. Yeah. But, um, so this was, a, this was a thing, uh, it was just kind of an audio illusion. Um, any chance we're going to get it? Yeah, or? I'm, I'm going to okay. get it right now. I'll, pro, I'll, my, I'll set my, it up. You know, my pro presenter is not wanting to play it, so oh, I'm going to have to do the old way of going in safari. And Using my hands? That's like a baby's <laughs> toy. <laughs> no, so uh, what I'll... If you do pull it up, just go ahead and pull it up, and you can just key it in behind me or something. There's, okay. uh, we don't even have to really hear it until the end, but um, there's a lot of setup for this video. Uh, but the snippet I saw is basically uh, a split screen side by side, and uh, the it's it's the same audio track, and it's someone repeating the word bar 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 over and over again. But you see. Um, the picture on one side oh, is... Why did oh, that play? Well, <laughs> no, we're not. Sorry. No, 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 no. So go ahead. It's just like, I don't know why. Yeah, so, okay, maybe not key it behind me because I'm kind of like between this guy's face. There you there go. You go. Oh, <laughs> oh, weird. Ooh, beam me up, um, Scotty. So, yeah, and I don't know if you've got any audio you can pop up on this just so you can hear it. This is a perfect example of something called the McGurk effect, which shows how our visuals... <laughs> Didn't know it was called the McGurk effect. Hearing. That's hilarious. Now I want you to count how many times you see a circle flash on screen. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the guy talking side by side, you can bring me back in. That's weird. Um, but the way that worked is uh, there's... It's the same audio track that you're hearing. So depending on what side of the screen you're looking at, whether you're seeing the the, the face mouthing the word bar or you're bar, seeing the face bar. mouthing the word far with an F, that's what your your brain hears. And you can actually go back and forth and, and see it happen in real time. And you can do it at your own pace so you know there's no audio trickery or anything going there. And uh, it's just kind of interesting there. It's it's Again, it's the same audio recording. Nothing's being done, but because of uh, the way the brain works or doesn't work, you hear something different. So uh, just, uh, I don't know, the only reason I want to bring this in because I thought it was relevant to our audio techs out there. I'm sure these people have to deal with all sorts of weird artifacts and you hear about that all the time mm -hmm. about speaker placement and uh, different production situations where you can have uh, sound waves canceling each other out and amplifying each other and you have all sorts of weird delay issues to work with. That's something I think we can all appreciate, the little video example there of, uh, oh wow, that works on me too. If you want to see the whole thing, it's on YouTube. Obviously, you can search for uh, the McGurk effect, apparently. Or bar. bar. McGurk, I love that name. I don't know. Did you ever watch uh, home movies? Or uh, Well, you watch Archer, right? Yeah. So, like, the guy who voices Archer, he was the uh, coach on this kid's show called Home Movie. Not a kid's show, but it's a show about a young movie director called uh, Brandon Smalls. And the, the, movie, the, sh the show was called Home Movies. And uh, Coach McGurk was his alcoholic, uh, bad bad role model <laughs> soccer coach and he was the the voice of Sterling Archer if you watch that show on FX so uh, check that out well I think it's enough rabbit holes for that movie <laughs> or for that uh, next topic I'll go next myself on it next. 
Yeah, that. So, um, and Scott was here. He really, uh, they, there was some developing news this week about the uh, the State Fair stage collapse, the yeah. Indiana State Fair stage collapse. The uh, um, what is it? The uh, Court of Appeals ruled against the state, saying that they uh, could possibly be on the hook for this. Uh, as the uh, employer of the con of the stage company that set up this uh, this rigging that was ultimately inferior and then uh, didn't hold up to the winds that it was subjected to and fell and and uh, caused uh, there were deaths in that were there not there were uh, yes the, there were there were yeah. there were probably I'm trying to look at it right now I'm trying to look at the article Sorry, I, yeah. I knew that there were some deaths in it maybe seven I think was it? yeah it was it was wasn't. And there were many more. I think there were like 19 injuries on top of that, or something. So it was it was a pretty bad deal. Um, but yeah, so there was some news in that. Scott's big on safety uh, where it comes to rigging, and especially some of these. You know, he's up in the rafters all the time, hanging lights and working with a lot of heavy equipment. So uh, we'll we'll save this sort of for a future topic and let Scott kind of go into some detail about his thoughts on this. But yeah, because um, he he really wanted to talk about it last when I was talking with this week, he was really ready to get roll. But yeah, and he, well, he's got some there. good perspective yeah. on it too. I mean, from having worked in this side, that side of the business for so many years, uh, he can really speak to that intelligently, much more so than myself. So we will kind of table it for a future discussion. But uh, it was also kind of interesting this week we had here in town locally uh, one of the one of our high schools, I guess, was building an athletic mm -hmm. center, and it was the same situation. You know, they erected this big super skeleton for it, and they did it wrong and it, it crashed and killed one of their workers and that, that just happened here locally um so yeah there, there's uh we as show techs have the opportunity to kind of step into these engineering related areas and you know the the consequences can be deadly serious so it definitely would behoove everybody out there to keep them keep an eye on safety and uh you know if you see something that doesn't look right mention it to somebody because it's you know that, that was what happened in indiana it sounds like Nobody really knew who was in charge, and it was an obvious bad idea to have all these people crowded around the stage in this kind of a weather event. But uh, good. But uh, yeah, it's just um, you. You are empowered as a as a lowly show tech to go out there and make sure people don't get killed because uh, no show is worth that. And with that somber sobering note, I'll go ahead and hit the next one more time. <laughs> next, which will tee us up nicely to go into our uh, job board section. So uh, job board something we do on a weekly basis. This is just our effort, a community outreach, a public service to try to find some gigs for the gigless, uh, try to find some employment opportunities for people out there who are interested in doing something different or uh, have lost faith in their ability to find something cool out there. Rest assured, there are tons of show tech jobs out there. I can't speak as to how great they end up being, but man, if you want to try something different, uh, the world is yours. Yeah, dude, sometimes you just got to cut me off. And, <laughs> I was like, wait, and wait, I'm, I'm wait, honestly, wait, I'm like, wait, I'm like wait. waiting for it. Like, just, just play the bump right <laughs> This sentence can't go on any longer. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I'll start off this week uh, from Indeed.com. Uh, a good church gig on our Easter Sunday edition here. Highland Park United Methodist Church here in Dallas. They're hiring a technician. Uh, basically a, a video technician for their main campus or a producer for their alternate satellite campus. Uh, so kind of a general purpose audiovisual staging media person, uh, good opportunity to serve the Lord and to uh, kind of round out your skill set in one of those positions there. Uh, secondarily, also at Indeed.com, the other side of the spectrum, CBS Radio here in Addison, uh, they've listed what they call a rare opening for one of their production director positions. Uh, this sounds like mainly a position that will be responsible for uh, the business side and the production side of internal spots and uh, voicers and things like that, also working with clients for their productions. Uh, so CBS Radio, if you want to work for one of the big dogs here in hmm. Addison, Texas. Also from Indeed.com, last one. I'm harping on Indeed, so <laughs> yes, hopefully indeed. Some, indeed you obviously need to advertise with us because you're getting it for free. Uh, Texas A&M Health Sciences Center here in Dallas. They're also hiring a video conference slash computer specialist too. Uh, it's a full-time position at $38,000 a year, uh, mainly just someone who facilitates uh, virtual meetings and media tech for video conferences and, and uh, that sort of thing there, voice and video for Texas A&M. Another big name, the Health Science Center. It's a little bit uh, education, a little bit medical. Bound to be a good scene to get into. 
Also up, we've got Mandy.com is listing a position out of uh, Glen Rock, New Jersey for Incom Conferencing. It's kind of similar to the Texas A&M job. This is a full-time audio media specialist for the financial sector. Uh, it'll be overseeing teleconferencing operations for uh, C-suite clients, you know, your executives. So you want to make sure that you're... Uh, this is one of those positions where uh, job recruiters are always looking for a show tech who presents well, knows how to put on a tie, who can interface with those uh, high-powered clients who actually have money to spend. Uh, it's one thing to be a roadie and to really know that everything you've got in your uh, engineering kit to be able to produce the best sound in the world. But, I mean, if you look like Jesus and you don't present well, I mean, there's only a limited number of places people can push you. So... Uh, if you are a well-kempt gentleman and you're interested in uh, breaking into the uh, Northeast in a major financial support role, check out Incom Conferencing on Medi.com. Uh, also, I've got ProductionHub.com. Uh, they had a position in lovely San Diego, California. California. A. San Diego. San Diego. I believe that means a... Say... Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is for a luxury real estate firm, so uh, high-class mansions in beautiful beach bodies in Lower California. If this sounds like something that might respond to you, they're looking for a videographer to shoot uh, basically three to four properties a week. These are property tours, real estate tours for uh, realtors and uh, home buyers. About three or four properties a week, uh, paying about four hundred to a thousand bucks a job. That's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's That's a, really good. I don't know. Yeah, that, that, the sunshine and uh, oceanfront, that could definitely steal me away from North Texas. That's pretty yeah. rad. Interesting about this one, got to have a drone. Well. They want either a DJI 2 or better. So, uh, yeah, like I was saying, Jordan, I mean, uh, this drone thing, you might want to get in on this as a jib operator. Mm -hmm. I think it behooves you to become a, a drone specialist as well. It's the future. Also, I thought that was interesting, like, uh, this is straight up a commercial application of a drone. There's no two ways about it. So apparently they've crossed that threshold and like uh, we're, we will be using drone operators and paying them to do our our thing here. So check out productionhub.com for that one out of San Diego. And lastly, we'll round it up with staffmeup.com. This one's kind of rad. Uh, Fine Brothers Entertainment. Uh, these are the guys on YouTube who do the kids react to videos, the old people react to videos. Uh, for example, they'll have like kids from today looking at like old 8-bit Nintendo games and just watching them go like, what the, who played this? Like, they're funny as hell. Good stuff. So uh, they're actually hiring a, uh, a full-time producer for their YouTube channel uh, based out of Burbank, California, so in the Los Angeles area, working for, uh, working for YouTube full-time. The future is nigh, folks, just like we've always said here on the Show Tech Show. That's all we've got on the job board this week, but check us out every week. We'll have all the best listings for the coolest jobs and some really random ones as well. We try to keep it fresh for you here on the Lone Star. So, what are we at? 15 minutes in the show? Eh, we're about 20 minutes in. That's not yeah, awful. Not that bad. No. Yeah, we're, uh, we'll kind of start di uh, diving into our main topic for the night. And maybe this won't be as lengthy. Maybe it'll be more uh, coherent without Scott here. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of appropriate that we wanted to start a series on production hacks. Uh, production, kind of like life hacks that you see, like things that, oh, I never thought about doing something that way, but that will save me a lot of time. So, this is our take on uh, the, the world of production and show teching. And I wanted to start it with maybe a series on video hacks. So, uh, the first thing I guess I've got on mine is a little something I put together, and I kind of mentioned it on an earlier show uh, we did here. This is kind of the Apple TV and how you can apply it. Do you have uh, pictures for... Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, I thought I heard you talking. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, nope. So this is a little invention I put together for uh, using basically an Apple TV as a wireless presenting solution. Um, if you've got an Apple TV and you've got it uh, tied to an iOS device, your iPad or your iPhone, you can actually do wireless presentations. You can do screen mirroring. And then if you take that Apple TV and connect it to your big screen or your projector, uh, that's, a, that's a good way to set up all that infrastructure on the fly. Well, I had an application where they needed that for a, a mobile application, basically. They wanted to be, I had an executive who wanted to be able to uh, go to a conference and plug this into a projector like he would plug in his laptop. And um, so we, uh, I put together a little uh, Pelican case with the Apple TV bundled inside of it. Uh, do you have a picture? Yeah, I'm going right now. Yeah, there. Okay, there we go. So this is what the the final product looks like. This is just a little... Uh, Sorry, I was laughing at the Apple sticker. <laughs> oh, yeah, Pelican. I had to brand it just so we... Uh, so this is kind of version one. You can see the Pelican case there, and it's got a power cord dangling on the side of it. But inside the Pelican case, we've got uh, the Apple TV there. 
Uh, down below, I've just got like a little uh, power strip, a little mini power strip with a couple of AC ports and a couple of USB ports so I can power the uh, Apple TV. And the white thing on the right is a little mobile router. Um, this is kind of cool because I can wire the Apple TV directly to that and kind of create a little uh, battery-powered Wi-Fi network. Oh. So I could program a phone or an iPad or whatever to remember that network and password. And uh, it would show up. So when you get go out to the site... You could basically just plug in the Apple Kit here. You never have to open it up or anything. You just keep it self-contained and closed. Mm -hmm. You power it up. That would send juice to the router. That would fire up the Wi-Fi network, and the Apple TV would come up, and it would be on that network. And so then on your, you know, a few minutes after you plug it in, or a few seconds, actually, your uh, phone would say, oh, I see that network. I must, be, uh, I must have wandered back into range of that network, so I'll go ahead and jump on that network and log in, and boom, the Apple TV is there for you. Um, that little mobile router is pretty cool too. It's got a uh, it's got an option for a uh, USB like a 3G or a 4G USB stick modem. So you could also connect to that and continue to have internet connectivity while you're on this little dedicated Wi-Fi network. Um, good little unit. So yeah, it's all self-contained like that. And I think one more picture forward kind of shows version two what I came up with. Just uh, came up with a little bit more hardcore connectivity options on the side of it. Just uh, drilled a HDMI out and a USB. Uh, port for the uh, connectivity. There's an Ethernet connection for if you've got wired connectivity you want to pop into and then just an IEC universal power tap instead of that gray cable hanging out the side. So it makes a very portable little uh, uh, carry case. Um, not really sure what the uh, FAA would think about that if you tried to fly with it, um, but it certainly is handy. It's very lightweight. It's easy for the execs to carry along with their briefcase. Plunk that down. It's about the same. The, uh, this particular case is about the size of an iPad actually, so it's a very Nice contained little package. Power it up, plug it into your projector. Um, I've actually got a little, there's a little HDMI to VGA adapter as well. So if you've got the old analog projector, you can plug them. Awesome little solution. If you'd like more information about it, uh, write us here at the show, showtech show at frontiertelevision.com. I'll be happy to tell you more. So that was my little uh, thing. Jordan, you're a big, uh, well, you're obviously a big pro presenter guy. We were talking about yes. the new version of pro presenter coming out next week in PowerPoint. Talk to me about uh, your experience using these as graphic solutions for broadcast and light broadcast. Okay, so, you know, I've had clients that basically use ProPresenter. Um, I've also had clients that use PowerPoint. You know, they basically can do the same thing. Um, what I like about ProPresenter, it's easier to organize. You can put, you know, in file playlists and stuff like that. And like PowerPoint, it's a basically a slide build transition. Um, the new version of ProPresenter that's coming out with ProPresenter 6, what you couldn't do in the five in previous versions, you can now kind of do animated elements, animated slides. So um, say for instance, you want to build it like a, almost like a PowerPoint, you know, how you can, in a slide you'll have different elements, like a title, a picture maybe, and a body text. And those can yeah. all animate in. Well, now in ProPresenter, they'll give you the option to do that, which, you know. That's nice. It, it, it is super nice because it used to, you. there's always been a wonky import from PowerPoint into ProPresenter. Yeah. It's always been like little wonky stuff wouldn't like import in. Also like, oh, fonts. We don't have these fonts. I think that, and that's another thing I want to rant about real quick mm -hmm. is when these presenters will give you this PowerPoint file and they don't have the um, fonts that are associated yes. with it. They'll use these wacky fonts that Amateur say, oh, tip. I downloaded this Price off this. formatted this. properly. Yeah, What's wrong I, with your computer? I downloaded this off my, you know, some font site or something like that. And, you know, it's yeah. like, great. Do you have the font? No. It's like, well, <laughs> it's, I don't have the font, so it's not going to play on my computer. It's not, you know. That irks me almost as bad as the whole, like, it's got a video included in it. I linked to it on my desktop, but I didn't bring the video with me. It's like, well... <laughs> Uh, I hope your USB stick is psychic because there's no way for it to find that video again, sir or ma'am. You know, it's just, uh, yeah, you need to figure out the portability options to make PowerPoint to work the way you want. But yeah. uh, PowerPoint and, to that degree, ProPresenter, both very powerful graphics programs, really. I mean, mm -hmm. people will kind of turn their nose up at them because they're not a $30,000 Chiron package. But wired correctly into a production and used appropriately, you know, if you stand on their strengths and kind of uh, avoid their weaknesses... You know, they're, they're great little programs. You can do very dynamic graphics and very uh, engaging lower thirds and, and keyed elements and full screen animations and bumpers. And uh, it's a very familiar environment for producers and uh, non technical people alike to kind of uh, give you their vision and kind of design within. Mm -hmm. We recently used PowerPoint uh, at my day job 
to uh, we've so we've got a big uh, Cisco digital signage network, and it's great. It's it's very uh, you know, it's very granular. You can do a lot to it. You can have all these specific timings and have the weather and the clocks and everything. There's a lot of things people like about them, but the interface is very uh, it's very heady. I mean, it's very it's something that you would never want to put your average business user in front of to you know to do their daily job. It would require a massive amount of retraining. No matter how simple they try to make the application. It's just not. I mean, it's, it's, there's too much to learn. So uh, we, we've kind of worked out a program or a process where people can basically design in PowerPoint. And then uh, similar to how you're talking, how ProPresenter can ingest PowerPoint, this will take this in their, their PowerPoint-derived content and allow them to change it in a simpler way um, that doesn't require a computer graphics degree to update these things. So there again, I mean, PowerPoint leveraging a you know, ridiculously expensive digital science system but giving uh, people that in-between uh, connection just because it's something people recognize. So, uh, what kind of things have you done with uh, like ProPresenter and, and PowerPoint? Like you know, um, I've done some corporate shows. Um, honestly, you know, ProPresenter was originally built for houses of worship, and that's the funniest thing about it. They kind of they're marketed towards house of worship to display their lyrics and motion backgrounds yeah. and stuff like that, but. Like I got into it at a, at a camp, and then like I started, you know, bring it with me on different road shows, and the client was like, "Oh, this is an awesome program." And then the client would buy it and yeah. would start using it. Then numerous other clients that I was working with that client would buy it for them for their laptops because for me it's simpler than PowerPoint, um, only because of the versatility of it. I can create playlists by days if I wanted to. So I, like if I have a five day gig, you know, I can create or five day show, I can create each individual day as a playlist and import each document, you know, a building show PowerPoint or something, not PowerPoint, but a, a slide. Cause you yeah. know, you can create a document which contains slides. slides. Um, and so in that slide I can drag, okay, that's Monday show. That's Tuesday show, Wednesday show. And it's all built in one program, one file. And like PowerPoint, you had to have like, open up different windows for five days yeah. and stuff like that. And it's easy to edit and stuff like that. Well, that's the thing. I mean, with the uh, pro presenter, it's a good intermediary for using PowerPoint in a production environment because um, it, you're mainly, as a director or producer, you're main, not really concerned with creating content. You're concerned with staging content and putting content on air. So uh, people can go and use PowerPoint all the live long day, especially now that uh, ProPresenter supports animations, you're saying, mm -hmm. and it lets them really create whatever dynamic look it is for their, their talk that they're speaking to. And then you can bring it in a way where uh, utilizing layers and uh, just timings and different animation op you know, options, you can incorporate that into your final product a lot more naturally than just uh, if, if PowerPoint were a raw feed going into your switcher or whatnot. Oh. And it also, there's there's some neat features that are also added into it. Um, you can do um, alpha channel support if you you know have a Pro Mac or something like that. You can come off and get an alpha card and send an SDI out, and that way you're downstreaming it, and you don't have to do a chroma key. You can basically do a, an alpha key off the image, so that would be great for lower thirds. Yeah. Um, anything that it, it could be really set pretty good, and with the you know the Pro Presenter six that's coming out, it's. It's going to be really some nice stuff added to it and everything that helps it out for the end user um, for graphics and stuff like that. It's I, I love it because it's pretty simple and it's it's organized. You know, stuff that yeah. you can't and do. Yeah, that's key. PowerPoint. You've got a ton of different media and sources like that. you got to keep it organized. And if you're oftentimes in these field situations where you're working off a laptop... I mean, you don't have the op you don't have the benefit of you know three twenty three inch monitors in front of you. You've got to kind of keep this compact and organized. So that's very cool. I think my my first experience so uh, using PowerPoint for graphics, I think, was uh, working for Auction Network. Yep. And uh, we um, they they had some really basic graphics needs that were kind of last minute, but they were kind of like, well, okay, you know, how can we do this in a way that doesn't break the bank? And we were you know we're like, well, I mean, everybody's got an, a MacBook Pro. Why don't we just you know, fire up PowerPoint, fire up Keynote, and you can pound out some lower thirds tonight in your hotel room, and, and we'll, you know, we'll, we basically chroma keyed them on the air, which was unfortunate because Auction Network is entirely green. Like, every, everything about their <laughs> logo the is green. green. Yeah, lovely. So, uh, you know, you want a green screen amount, but we ended up, like, making uh, purple background keys or something like that. And uh, for the most part, it did pretty well. I mean, it was pretty dirty, but going into a, uh, a digital switcher, we just brought that in. We were able to do uh, a downstream key with their logo. We were able to do, you know, bring in lower thirds, full screen slates. Great. They could have little animated things going on and uh, 
you wouldn't know that it wasn't some uh, high-end bumper package put together in After Effects. So being played off EVS or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was it was pretty uh, dirty simple, but I mean, it really did the trick and it made the production look really sharp versus just a raw video cut that you had to go in after the fact and add you know high end graphics to. We were able to do it live, and as Bill O'Reilly's a big fan of saying, that's that's the way to do it, right? <laughs> we'll do it live. Yeah. So uh, so kind of in the same thread of PowerPoint, I guess this is a different this is a different hack, but uh, this is one I kind of found recently, and I'm really glad I did. You can actually use PowerPoint for creating storyboards. Hmm. Uh, and this is, uh, it, it has to do with the notes view with um, when, you're, when you're going to print your PowerPoint slides, it'll give you the option to do, uh, you know, the, the, a page with two or three slides on one side and then some uh, notes on the other side. But there's actually a way to uh, export the, uh, it's, it's not the normal print options, it's one of, the, uh, one of the export options in the new version of PowerPoint where you can actually put the notes printed out side by side with the pictures. So this is a simple way to do a shot list if you want to have your audio information or your musical tracking in the notes for each slide and then you go and print with this thing you get a nice easy to turn in packet to someone to review where they can see you know simple sketches of what you want to have the camera point of view be and then some audio notes next to it and you can really tell the story in a really compact fashion. I've used that on a couple of productions now and uh, it's nice because PowerPoint, it's becoming one of those ubiquitous programs. It's not special screenwriting software or special uh, storyboarding program. Um, you can have this in a business environment. You can pound out quick productions that way. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's the right way to communicate audiovisual media. If you're, doing, if you're in the planning stages and the pre-production stages, people who uh, don't have your vision, they need to be able to see it and, and understand what the audio is going to be at the same time. So storyboarding is huge, and this is a nice, clean professional way to do it that doesn't involve hand sketching and, and you know drawing in Photoshop and things like that. You can use the, the shapes tools to make simple diagrams and they have arrow tools and everything so you can you can show camera movement and camera direction and, and uh, just like you would in a, in a higher end storyboarding application. Um, but that little notes view is... So <laughs> um... Yeah, I, I, I've, I've seen about the PowerPoint storyboards and stuff like that, which is really interesting. And it's a easier way for us to like you know, do your shot list and stuff like that. And I, I've done some similar things with like Microsoft Word and like grabbing a box and it's like hey, like this or like yeah. pencil and something like that, pencil and paper, the old school way and stuff like that. But honestly, that is pretty simple. It's you know an easier way to doing stuff. I think. Yeah, I should have uh, spent a little bit more time. Uh, researching, and I could have give, given some actual shortcuts to it, but just a high-level view of this. Yes, it is possible to print out your notes, uh, basically three slides per page, uh, and it makes it to a really easy way to print to pound out those storyboards, especially for short-form productions, commercials, uh, you know, small corporate bumpers, things like that. Uh, very easy to to put together in a very clean format, and doesn't require a bunch of specialized software. So. I guess that's uh, that's enough of our Microsoft advertisement, but you know, PowerPoint Pro Presenter, don't uh, don't pass them by. Make them part of your production toolkit if you're in the video land. Um, I might have one that uh, another yeah. thing that's not coming off Microsoft, but you know, for us, we actually um, use Google Documents for yeah. all our you know storyboarding and stuff like that, which I think is example. If we do a rundown sheet every week of all the stuff that we're going to be talking about. And it's different than like creating a document, uploading to Dropbox or a file, some other file sharing server. It's like this stuff is like me and Richard here could be typing on the same document and it's going to show yeah. us what updates are happening at that time. And then, you know, Google Documents is a great way to share ideas with, um, you know, your, your other people that you're working with, your, you know, your group, you know, if you're doing a production or stuff like that. Y'all can all just be working on this document and show you who's editing and stuff like that. You can dragging files into, you know, a shared folder and yep. work from there. Um, I think it's a great tool for production people to have. Even, you know, if you're not a Google fan, you know, you can use Dropbox to upload your files or something like you send it or something like that. Well, that's the thing about Google Docs. Uh, Google Docs and Google Drive, are, they're both available for either Android or, you know, Apple mm -hmm. iOS and on, you know, Apple and uh, PC platforms. So it, it really is a good collaborative tool. And like Jordan was saying, um, Google Docs, for example, when you're doing, they, they have, uh, you know, PowerPoint, Excel, and Word alternatives. 
So you can do slideshows or spreadsheets or, or just documents. Documents are what we use here on the Show Tech Show for our show notes and for our rundowns. Um, and that's great because it's, like it's like a virtual whiteboard experience where you can have multiple parties interacting at the same time and putting in notes and making changes. And, um, you know, sometimes we do that intentionally. Sometimes, usually we just do it accidentally if we're ever both on the same time. You know, I'll be working in one section, somebody else will be working in another section. We can kind of see those things coming in real time. Um, and it's great just because, you know, you can do it from your mobile device. You can do it, you know, from your desktop. And it just makes it uh, where you can be collaborating on the go and kind of putting down those notes as you have ideas for whatever it is you're working on as you have them while they're still fresh and not having to wait, not having to sketch them down and then go back and, oh, what was I thinking? You know, what was I going there? And then if somebody else is along with you, um, they, they can be right there with you uh, having that pre-production meeting, that impromptu pre-production meeting as you're, you know, at Starbucks or walking around or, or doing something else. So, um, yeah, Google Docs is a great tip for uh, video production or just production in general. Not even, uh, not even video specific, but, yeah, it's a great app. Um, another one I want to talk about, getting back into the video hacks, and I kind of discovered this when I was doing my little NASA jaunt uh, back in December. Uh, but I basically took a GoPro camera with me. And uh, I had a, just a monopod. Um, I think I was actually using a tripod, but I was basically just using it as a monopod. And there were a couple of situations where I was in the back of a herd or for whatever reason, I just needed to get a higher angle shot. And I, so I just basically just hoisted it up over my head, you know, put the camera 10 feet in the air over my head. Not necessarily expecting to get a great video out of it, but I figured GoPro shooting pretty high resolution. Maybe I can pull a snapshot out of this and get a good image that otherwise wouldn't have been possible. Um, but... So that said, GoPro on a stick, right? Brought that back over to my editor, and I'm using Final Cut Pro. We kind of talked about that ad nauseum in the past. They have a simple image stabilization feature uh, that does a decent job. It's just a, it's just a one-click thing that says, oh, this image is shaky. Let me fix it for you. And uh, it does all the work for you, so you don't have to be a, a genius After Effects editor, Nate. Uh, you, just, you just run this through Final Cut, and um, it, it does a great job. It, does a, it really smooths it out, and it makes it look... You get a little bit of wobble sometimes. You get a little bit of interpolation wobble, so you, don't, you definitely want to be making smooth camera moves when you're doing this, this bit. Um, but yeah, this is my new way to replace a jib. So sorry, Jordan. Uh, <laughs> I'm out of business. Huh? Yeah, no, I mean, it, obviously it's not good for live, but if you're doing anything uh, for post-production work, um, it's, it's great. Yeah, you can totally just throw the camera up in the air and then pan around and look around. I ran a thing, thing through image stabilization, and I was shocked. I, was, I had no idea. Like I was sure I wasn't using a jib on that shot, but it looked pretty darn smooth, and it was just some goofy guy with a camera on a stick. So uh, if you have a GoPro... If you don't have a GoPro, get a GoPro. Tip number one, uh, get a monopod, put it on that, and uh, get to know your image stabilization subroutines. They, uh, those little algorithms will do a great job and, and make you look like a pro. You know, I've, um, I'm going to cut in on this a little bit. I've been actually looked into, I saw this on a YouTube channel okay. of a guy that was using this, yeah. And um, it's this gimbal that is made for the GoPro, or the Hero 3 and 3 Plus, probably the 4 also. Um, but it's a three-axis gimbal handheld system that you can use. Yeah. I'm trying to pull up a picture, but my internet is not working. Computer's not working. Internet. But What's our stream um, doing? We still outbound. Yeah. Is it still green? Oh no, it's still green. No, it's okay. it's, it's me typing in ProPresenter. Who cares it's about on Pro Presenter. But it looked really. It has like three or four different settings, and it's pretty simple to use. Um, if you want to look it up, it's like a. Feu, F E I Y U G three Ultra three axis handheld gimbal for the GoPro Hero three three plus four, probably four also. Um, I looked at the video. I was I'm probably yeah. It comes with the it also is for the four. Um, I'm probably gonna buy it because it it's pretty sweet. Um, I've seen some uh, kind of static steady cams for GoPros, just little mini steady cam rigs with handles and little counterweights underneath them. Uh, GoPro is obviously not a difficult thing to counterbalance, so you can you can do a steady cam for those cameras pretty simply. But this is an actual motorized gimbal that will do the the adjusting and keep that floating shot perfectly still. I'm guessing. Exactly. Yeah. Um. I'm about to look at the image here. Hold on. It's coming. It's coming. It's Stand coming. by. All right. So here I'll show up on eBay real quick. Hold on. eBay. All right. So oh, I can turn my outfit on. What? Hold on. Well, Jordan's trying to figure that out. I will talk about nothing in particular. Okay, here you are. Here. All right. All right, so that's what it is right there. 
Okay. It's and it's a three axis gimbal system, and you can basically have it locked where you're when you're moving your arm up, the camera stays exactly in that same spot, hmm. or you can have it in a mode where when you kind of move down, the camera will kind of do a tilt down or a tilt up if you're you know moving up or stuff like that. But it's a gimbal system. I I seen a couple of videos of it being used. It's pretty sweet. You can actually probably attach it to your chest or your body or, or even to a model pod or something like that, and another accessory yeah. that you can add on to it that makes it um, you know, a stable shot. Yeah, you've you know. got that kind of uh, freedom of motion. You really can do all kinds of weird shots with that. Yeah. So um, that, I mean, that, I don't know how, how I do knew how heavy this piece is. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that might be a, a good drone. I mean, I'm imagining that's probably a drone application because if you do put you know these little mini cameras on uh, aerial drones that's the first thing is the uh, motor wobble and things like that kind of get a little bit annoying something like this is really what that system is it's designed for 15.2 ounces not awful so i'm a little bit troubled it's only available on ebay i'm not a big well, fan no, of I, it's on, on ebay I, it's on amazon also that's the first link i i try to get oh, a okay. picture of it um it's also on amazon so you can purchase through amazon probably other sites as well but uh, that's the only image that i can see it on yeah okay well fair enough um so that's all i really had on the uh, production hacks unless you had anything else you wanted to uh nothing really throw up really mm -hmm. okay well, uh, I guess it's a little bit early, but we'll go ahead and wrap it up for this week um, because last week was two hours long. <laughs> so if you need more Show Tech Show in your life, go visit our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Star, and check out the Show Tech Show rundown because there are just oodles of Show Tech Show episodes from this year. More than you'll care to watch in one setting, I guarantee it. Uh, so next week we'll probably continue on our little production life hacks series. Uh, I'll try to get Scott on board with some lighting tricks. He knows his way around light and magic, and I'd like to see what he can show us. Uh, he does some interesting things. These might not necessarily be hacks per se, but uh, something that just makes you uh, get a little bit more bang for your lighting buck. And he's all about saving you money, I'm sure. Um, and we'll have more of that series rolls on. We'll do some audio. We're going to try to do uh, just some various other fields. Just try to get everybody involved. this video involved. thing a little bit. <laughs> What are you doing? No, just get off this uh, video, this video thing we've been having for like the past three weeks. God, I know. It's been video palooza. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. If you hate video, uh, too bad. No, Show Tech Show uh, next week coming up. We'll try to get Scott back up here in the set. Jordan may or may not make it. He's going off to NAB. So uh, <laughs> if, if I'm running the board, I apologize in advance for how choppy the show is going to be cut. But uh, we'll try to have some fun with it, right? We'll fix it in post. Be your first, is this your first time doing it touchscreen? Because honestly, I've had no mistakes since it's been touchscreen. When it was like keyboard or mouse, I made numerous mistakes on it. I, I mean, mean, I actually closed the program down and quit it on accident. I was like, what did I just <laughs> do? You know? Yeah, it's uh, the, the touchscreen makes it pretty nice. I'm actually looking forward to that. I've done some off air stuff with it, but I've never really produced anything live with it. So it'll be fun to kind of try out the engineering magic. Um, yeah. All right. Well, that's all we've got for this week on the Show Tech Show. Thank you for joining us once again for this great little uh, weekly program we do here on the Lone Star Webcast Network. Like I said, if you missed it or you want to see more of us, we're on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash TV Lone Star. That's where you can find all of our uh, other shows and uh, specialty videos as well as the playlist for this show specifically. It's kind of our podcast version for the on-demand viewer. Uh, we'll join you same bat channel, same bat time next week. Next week. Yep, that's it. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody.